sensational it really was we were all happy we there's nothing succeeded like success we knew we were on a winner but we were conscious of the fact that uh, we had to keep working very hard to make it successful every week hello good evening how are you and welcome to the white heather club which comes to you direct from scotland hello come on my bonny lassies You're still talking with DJ. You got a happy lot, and it came across on television. It came across on stage when we're working theatre. Stand by. <laughs> My agent said it made you as well known as cornflakes. Uh, I don't know why I had to put the corn into it, but it did. You, you became household words, household names, and we had, we just worshipped the program in many ways and took it very seriously. And yet, at the same time, there was a kind of there always was a very much a, a party atmosphere. Now we come to our little intimate review type spot where Joe and Alice <laughs> and myself are sort of indulge in being witty in certain topicalities and nonsense in general. We'd like to call this, uh, for want of a better name, at the drop of a clanger. Comedy, 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 oh, it's comedy, 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 oh, and that's the healing chorus. That's better than it. From central Glasgow nowadays, the motor car has vanished, and with it many people think a lot of trade has vanished. At one time when you left your car, you feared someone might mark it, but now you'd never heed a dunt if only you could park it. Come on, come on, come on, oh. come on, come on, come on, oh. come on, come on, come on, come on, oh. and that's the healing chorus. Sometimes we only finish writing the things. Um, literally 10 minutes before transmission. So sometimes it could be quite hysterical, but the spontaneity of it was marvellous. I've tried to think of verses that will fit into this song. I'm afraid I didn't a day to wheel, for I didn't hear lying. Uh, Mary had a little lamb, she kept it in the lobby. And every time a burglar came, it whistled on the bobby. Come on, 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 Each morning when I'm working, I get up at seven, make the breakfast, bath the baby, housework till eleven. This week I am on holiday. My wife said, you shall live right. 
I'm up at six in Vassa Berlin, toil a lot till midnight. Come and eat, 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 come so great that at one time, I think, I've been trying to check up on the, the year, and I think it was 1961, I had three records in the Scottish Top 20 at the one time. I think they were the Bonnie Lass of Ivy, the one that uh, we had a laugh at tonight, the work of the Weavers, and the other one was a pop one, Dream Lover, which was a cover of the Bobby Darren. Version. You know, Joe, I've just been thinking, you must be one of the busiest young men in show business in Scotland today, what with records and radio and television, and now you've got... The textile industry. <laughs> the textile industry. You better tell the viewers what are you talking oh, about, I. will you? The work of the weavers. <laughs> One, two. We're all met together here to sit and to crack. We are places in our hands and our work up on our back. There's no trade among them all, can either mend or mag. If it wasn't for the work of oh, the weavers. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would we do? We wouldn't have hay clays made out of our wood. We wouldn't have hay our clothes made of black or blue. Crack our boots to say that we have been faithfully select loots. But yet for all the mockery, the Canada will suit. Now the winner wants the work of the weaver. If that wasn't for the weaver, what would we do? We wouldn't have hay clays made out of our wood. We wouldn't have hay our coats, neither black nor blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weaver. To put it in context, at that time, television was not new to the country, but certainly new to the general public in Scotland. And the people took a great interest in a weekly show. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would we do? We wouldn't have made our We wouldn't have hair coats, neither black nor blue. If it wasn't for the war, for the Do you know the Duke of Perth? Do I know the Duke of Perth? No, but I've met the Laird of Off the Mark. <laughs> well, it's a real. Oh, it's a real. That's a real thing. Ladies and gentlemen, would you take your partners, please, for the Duke of Perth? <laughs> Jimmy Shand is Jimmy Shand, a living legend and has been a living legend since the 30s. He is Mr. Scottish Country Dance Music, not only in Scotland, but all over the world. And a great hockey personality too. I have fond recollections of this man here, but whenever he picks up the phone, and I don't know whether I'm complimented or not, because he says, is that you, son? You know, I mean, after all, Jimmy, come on, son. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> That's the first thing. I know. <laughs> Are you gonna still fuck your age? Well, I'm 69, coming up, you see. Oh, oh I'm just a beer man. I'm yet. just 83. No, it's 83. <laughs> You can copy certain individuals now, but you're far better if you assert your own style of playing. I can't help it playing the way I do. Know that it's good, but I'm a believer that each melody, each tune, has its own pitch and it has its own Frisian and expression. Tempo was. Mm -hmm. I 
was doing the song I like Koen by Yontun, which Jimmy was playing beautifully with me, but we wanted to take the one of the verses and slow it down and sing it slowly, you know. She'll wander by the aching tree instead of fiddle dum dee dum dee dee dum dee. So I said to Jimmy, now, Jimmy, at this point I sing Colaboche. He says, you can sing what you like, son, but I'll be playing it in two four. Did you find it quite exciting to work on, Jimmy? I never get excited, lads. <laughs> Isabel James was the female counterpart of Dixie Ingram. She came down with Bobby Watson to guest in one of the shows and she gave a freshness and her own individual style to um, a sort of choreographed Highland dancing. <laughs> I remember even now, after all these years, when that tiny child came down with Bobby Watson. She was the only dancer I ever knew who actually danced about three or four inches off the floor. The toes never touched the floor. She was huge. I mean, it was a, quite a privilege for me to, to be asked to, to do to, to dance solo on a live television show at 17 years old. I mean, it was something that, you know, was, in, was incredible to me. I was really, really, really lucky. It was exciting. Beautiful dancer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Isabel James. There were all kinds of youngsters who got their first chance on the White Hair Club, and not only did they appreciate it, but they went on to better things, and that was the great thing about it. We made people, we made stars. <laughs> I tried to make country dancing more popular through modernising it. Watching Gene Kelly over the years, Fred Astaire, whoever, you bring different things in. And I, I was very serious about my dancing and Stuart said to me, son, never forget a laugh is worth a pound. And I played my dancing for laughs ever since. <laughs> I mean, he used to tell jokes to you during the dance, so that you know you would you, you would laugh all the time. Um, and he was he was so relaxed. He was just everything he should be, you know. And it was no, it was just easy to dance with Dixie. Very easy, easy and enjoyable. There was a young man from Danoon who set off one day for the moon. When he got there, it rained, and so he exclaimed. Ah, I might as well have gone to date a greener. The way the thing was presented, the, the production was really tight and it was really punchy, and the content of the programme was a bit different from what had gone before. And I think it just appealed to the, the people at that time. They enjoyed this kind of straightforward Scottish-type music. Obviously, you can't please everybody, and um, there are still those who talk about heather and haggis and kilts and whatnot, but there's a great demand for that kind of music, as long as it's presented sincerely. And I think that was the one thing about the White Heather Club, it was always very, very sincerely presented. <laughs> I 
I think, honestly, that, that, that we could have continued, because I've been involved with television shows whose formula, quite honestly, was based on the way of the club. And I still think there is a place for that kind of entertainment, because to me, it's the very fact that it's based on traditional values means that it doesn't have a time of an evening. From all of us here at the White Heather Club, good night, good luck, and here's to black wheel. I would say it was the most enjoyable. That and the stage presentation, the same thing, was the most enjoyable period of my life in show business. Of my life. <laughs> There's a further tribute to Andy Stewart on Radio 2 on Monday evening at 7 o'clock.